Good day, folks. It's Tony Fortunato from the Technology Firm. I thought uh, since everybody enjoyed that last one, and just another quick sample of what we're doing in class. Now I'm I'm whipping through this pretty quick because I don't want a super long video. And of course, this is not just what we do. We do a bunch of stuff. So the key here is that it's I'm going to say 80% hands-on, and we try to do as much different stuff as we can. So that way, anybody who has to do something in the future, at least they know it could be done. Right. Not so much. I'm ever going to do this again, but I know it can be done. Right. So in this case, I got a trace file. It's 773 packets. It's got a bunch of stuff in it. So I sent a few pings. So if I just do an ICMP display filter, I can see all the pings here. First thing uh, I'm going to cover is which pane do we use? Obviously, there's the list detail. That's the bytes. And it depends what we're going to accomplish. So just bear with me here for a moment. So here's a bunch of pings. This is the detail part of it. Here's the bytes part of it. And one thing we talk about in class is looking for a signature. And obviously the signature is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, so on and so on. As I go through the packets, you will see regardless of who I'm pinging, it's the same payload, right? This is a Microsoft ping. From that, we're going to say, hey, you know what? What if I want to capture just or display just the packets? with the A in this one spot, because A could be anywhere in the packet, right? It could be uh, other parts of the payload. It could be down here. Who knows? So especially when we're looking for um, security-based stuff, you want a certain pattern or a certain signature at a certain spot, and you want to see those packets. How do you do that? So we'll just do the display filter one right now real quick, but in class, I also show you how to do the capture one. So what do you do? Well, the A here is at a specific location. Now, some analyzers call this data pattern offset. Some call it a slice operator. And it doesn't matter what you call it. So we're looking for data in a spot. And this spot is over here. OK? Now, what is that? So hexadecimal-wise, we're going to count. So 2, 0, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A. Because it's hex, right? You don't say 10. It's A. So this is 2A. The other way to look at it is if I click on this guy, this 6 1 here, it says data 42 73 in the bottom corner here. It's telling me it's at 42. It's also 2A. So it depends on what we're trying to accomplish. So what do we do now? So if I just go up here to my display filter and I type frame, and you'll see I've got already. I've already typed it in earlier, so it's in my recently used filter list. Frame, square bracket, 42, end of square bracket, equal, equal, double quote, small a, end of double quote, enter. And now I just see those packets. And if I look down at the bottom here, it says I've displayed 51 of 773. So conversely, if I want the next one over, this letter B, it's just one byte over, I can just simply change this to 43. Change this to the letter B. It's case sensitive. Enter. And now I've got those packets again. Just to show you that you know it does work, I'm going to intentionally make an X. It's not going to work. It doesn't exist. Enter. Nothing. See that? So that's a real easy way of looking for a specific byte in a specific location of a packet. And again, not so much I'll ever do this again, but it's nice to know it could be done. Have a good day, folks. Bye for now.